Hello friends, welcome back to this session of innovations in marketing and marketing of innovations. And we are going ahead with our discussion on the factors as authors have been describing on you know which are associated with the need of innovation. We talked about commoditization and you know how change in technology better informed customers and more intense competition is associated with commoditization. And keep reminded of the fact that we discussed in earliest most part of our discussions about scaled up perspective and whole of the value chain moving upwards. People who are developing technology, people who are developing machines, people who are developing other enablers and on the other side people who are serving consumers. So, everyone is scaling up and that is where commoditization comes in. It brought universalization, quality standards, but definitely it affected as far as the whole scenario goes. And then comes in consolidation, which is associated with mergers and acquisitions, alliances and survival of the fittest as the authors say and references there with the slide, wherein five forces of changes in marketing environment uh, have been described by uh, authors in this book, Beyond Traditional Marketing Innovations in Marketing Practice. Now, let us see what consolidation, power shift, margin erosion and value focus comes with. So, consolidation implies when you know the strength, the power or, or the control goes in the hands of few buyers. Sellers also face that kind of a situation wherein they, they are powerful and Michael Porter has described that thing with the perspective of five forces, how five forces they work and that is what you can find on several avenues including when you google for that. Several books talk about that model. It is a very important contribution by Michael Porter and definitely these authors have contributed a lot and I would request you to keep on surfing through all these authors and their contributions in due course of time. So, consolidation is the process of growing the concentration of sales and profits among a handful of major customers. Here authors describe uh, about the need of innovation with this kind of a perspective. So, it gets concentrated somewhere and the central issue of marketers facing consolidation among their customers is to find ways of acquiring and retaining their ever larger accounts and doing so profitably. So, when it goes into hands of few customers, it is a it is a major major concern for you to how to hold those customers. There are several large retail chains which hold that kind of a power, they, they, they are buying from you. So, you have to compete with different kinds of supplier in uh, similar kinds of categories. And if you are not a very large manufacturer of those products, then you have to acquire those products from somewhere else also. So, there are sub suppliers also. It is a chain out there, but then you have to compete with that and then there are several issues associated with that. And authors describe that the recent focus on key account processes and customer relationship management is a reflection of changing times where gaining or losing a single customer could have a major impact on profitability. When you scale up, this is a repercussion it happens because many times larger buyers or customers they tend to get hold of several smaller competitors and that brings further consolidation. And I was probably I mentioned that in my last session that if you look at industries different kinds of industries as of now you would realize that there the, the whole of the industries, they are largely bifurcated amongst few customers, soft drink industry for that matter, I, I named it earlier, I remember white goods for that matter, refrigerators and washing machines and kitchen appliances and so on and electronic goods, televisions or let us say screen based industry and you would realize what I am talking about. Few buyers, they have larger capacity as far as fulfilling the needs of their customers go. So, that is where the authors focus upon and they talk about you know several examples including one main example would be the global automobile manufacturing industry. 
you know, in which suppliers find themselves relying on the shrinking num number of OEM customers, buyers. And some other sectors facing consolidation includes healthcare, pharmaceuticals, shipping and transportation, FMCGs and so on. And largely it is applicable in, in current scenario, it is applicable in almost every industry. I would not traverse into brand power which has been created around by those renowned customers or buyers or you know the larger parts of larger competitors in every industry more or less that would slightly digress our discussion. But to uh, further dwell into that you may uh, see my subject product and brand management and there you would realize that how things are and that is actually a connected thing when we are talking of need for innovation. When consolidation comes in definitely organizations they spend lot of strength in bringing their brand up and retaining that brand value because that actually differentiates them at the end of the day. Many times for example look at apparels many times it is very hard for us to differentiate between two kinds of products but then the brand name differentiates that many times if I just put similar kinds of product in front of you without labels, you would realize it would be very hard for you to recognize the difference between those, but then brand power differentiates. So, I would not traverse into that as of now, although communication innovation which we would be talking about in due course of time definitely is associated with developing a brand value in the eyes of the customers at the end of the day. And that is what we would be implying when we would be uh, talking about innovations in marketing and marketing of innovation further. All these things would have a different role to play in our discussions. The process of consolidation is accelerated by increasing mergers, acquisitions and alliances among previously independent organizations. That means when, when someone is unable to differentiate that way, one has to find ways to survive or to submerge. And then comes in power shift. Again, you see commoditization and consolidation are leading towards power shift. It is almost obvious, but authors have described it beautifully wherein they talk about that one of the key consequences of the trend towards consolidation is that there is a general shift of bargaining power away from the vendors to the buyers. That is quite genuine when, when we talk of that. You see everyone tries to put up the bigger advantage towards them because ultimately it is a war for customers at the end of the day and especially when you have grown too big, you are a high revenue generating organization, but margins are less and thin because costs are high or larger number of cost components are there. This trend is very much evident in retailing industry for example, where the big chains and buying groups have gained a massive upper hand as the authors say and Walmart is an excellent example. With the organization using its gigantic power, buying power to drive down prices uh, paid to the suppliers. And you see when we are talking of a sales volume of almost 550 billion, then definitely it, it, it is quite logical. But the point here is sometimes you wonder that why do not you have so many Walmarts or why do not you have you know so many McDonalds for example so many pizza huts, so many dominoes, why do not you have Cokes and Pepsis in almost all the countries? It is their quality that they have scaled up to that level and they have consolidated that is very fine, but you would appreciate that if people would have innovated in due course of time in terms of value chain, the complete value chains, then definitely there would have been larger number of organizations serving in same industry. And there can be few examples here and there where you would find you know those those kind of things. For example, if you would look at uh, that is not very precise an example, but there is an element of uh, non consolidated sort of uh, you know situation. Uh, for example, in education industry should I say it I, I should not be calling it industry because uh, uh, largely organizations are there for not for prof profit motive as far as their uh, organizational constitution goes. But if you will look at this with, with the perspective, although uh, again there is uh, you know a question mark in this example and uh, please bear with me because students are not customers that is very true. But just look at this example that we have an organization wherein uh, if even if the industry is the customer and student is the product, we are generating a product here. But then 
still consolidation has not come up though the uh, structure and the basic soul of the subject areas or courses are similar content is also very very same. And sometimes I look at the situation with a you know slight paradox books have consolidated the book the publish publishing industry has quite consolidated especially in terms of textbooks, but institutions have not institutions there is a huge differentiation mark probably when the further benchmarks are achieved or let us say larger number of faculty gets generated in due course of time and people come up to a mark then definitely things would be slightly difficult. But as of now this example can somehow you know complement the discussion what uh, which we are having at this moment. So, you see the shift of bargaining power downstream to the customers and in turn to their customers has taken place across different industries including computer parts, electronics, auto parts and components, packaging material and so on and almost everywhere. That is why you would appreciate many a times and I would be referring to that uh, not precisely as a part of with reference to the context of innovations in marketing, but uh, it is a genuine kind of a thing when a B 2 B organization traverses from B 2 B to B 2 C. So, that is almost you know wherein some forces in B 2 B space are overwhelming and they think in terms of moving from this side to that side. Many organizations which cannot do that for example, Intel either they should and I remember that uh, if I am not wrong Intel came into computer business once. So, they definitely had CPU business with them which I do not think they are pursuing probably they are into larger servers or something uh, which we, we have to check what, what is the current status of. But I, I remember that they, they refocus on their core business, but then without traversing from B 2 B to B 2 C Intel inside the brand campaign and I, I mentioned brand here. So, the brand campaign is an example effective you know uh, downstream marketing uh, wherein uh, it is an example of effective downstream marketing where innovations have helped the organization to bypass the industrial customers and promote the product to the end users Intel inside. So, that kind of a perspective they focused upon if they would have gone to uh, be CPU or computer manufacturers by themselves if Intel would have come into laptop business. So, then probably the scenario would be slightly different and which we have referred to then comes in margin erosion again a natural progression from power shift towards margins wherein the producer margins have been affected negatively by the combined effects of commoditization consolidation of customer base and the shift in the bargaining power almost natural it happens here you see the intelligence of authors is so important here in this discussion and I appreciate that and I congratulate them for this kind of a book. You see the most important element which they have mentioned here is that this is a natural progression which is going on which would have gone for several industries, but somehow organizations and marketers overlook that. When commoditization is getting generated consolidation is coming from this side power shift is inevitable marketers have not yet looked at then comes in margin erosion and they are still not looking at. And then there is an example of Levi Strauss uh, which initiated you know uh, uh, sort of a I would not say compromise, but a different kind of you know uh, brand which could accommodate some lower prices. And Nokia also faced some similar kinds of issues and then they also came with uh, some, some alternatives and so on. So, that is the perspective as far as the whole scenario goes and you see pressure on management to increase profitability and shareholder value has coincided with the issue of margin erosion many times that is what we are talking about. But again we are talking about the need of innovation here and the most important part is that if this process is largely inevitable and evident why are we unable to notice that. I would say that all the intelligent marketers do notice that, but what to do is the major question and that is where this course comes in. I would not say that we would be guaranteeing the perspective of some solutions based on 
you know that we have noticed that and the authors already have noticed that so this is the solution you come up with this and this would go away no the purpose of this course is to bring in an insight associated with the need of innovation in marketing first and then propelling the methods and the prospects associated around that so that being a practitioner and a future practitioner you can think of it beforehand and bring out a solution on the basis of a foreseen innovation in due course of time. Traditional marketing practices provide way less in fighting the margin erosion and that is what where the need comes in. Then the last fo uh, element is value focus and all these forces of changes in market have resulted in companies to re-examine their strategies and move into a new path of providing customers novel offers, differentiated values and these values are targeting, targeted at combating the ongoing commoditization and margin erosion again a very natural progression a drive towards customer oriented organization a great focus on value innovation. Nestle did that by emphasizing on innovation while keeping a distinction between renovation and innovation. Nescafe the global instant coffee brand was an improved formulation of the company and aimed at renovation by keeping pace with consumer expectation and Nespresso a roast and ground coffee making system that incorporated hardware and services a great success at on its launch looked at innovation by working to jump ahead of the consumer with novel product ideas other examples include SKF and IBM and so on and here comes the need of innovation. The traditional marketing discipline as it is as the author says I am reading from those lines has not been able to address the changes happening around business strategy. They noticed that they knew that they were focusing upon that either marketers had short term goals or marketers were overlooking that because they were too busy with competition or somehow they realized that how what difference does it makes we are too large and what happens in my lifetime is more important other than what happens after when I leave the organization. Many questions come to a marketer when they are focusing upon these kind of things and you see that is how when value innovation perspective comes into being. So I leave you with this thought as far as this establishing the need for innovation goes and we will be pursuing several things in terms of as far as how innovation can be pursued in terms of marketing and next element which I would be focusing upon is now associated with consumer behavior. How to look at consumer behavior with respect to need of uh, as far as innovation in marketing goes. What are the aspects associated with that? So just bear with me and think in terms of as far as the perspective around uh, the association of innovation with changes in consumer behavior. But before we could dwell into that I must focus upon the you know influencers or the uh, sort of uh, stimuli because of which consumer behavior has or would have changed substantially and today although we might not realize that but some stimuli have been the turning point in the history of consumer behavioral change and that would have propelled organizations to think in terms of different kinds of innovative perspectives or if they have not looked for that then they should be looking for those kind of stimuli and the effect of those stimuli on consumer behavior in retrospective perspective as well as in futuristic perspective. So let us begin with the perspective of consumer behavior. So before I come back with a deeper analysis of what consumer behavior does in terms of as far as the whole scenario goes or why should we be looking at this perspective or this point intensely I wish for you to start reading the text which we have suggested the papers or the articles which we are suggesting continuously and try and look around you with the perspective of commoditization and consolidation with reference to all the natural progressions which are associated with these two elements. I will be seeing you next time with a larger discussion or deeper discussion on consumer behavior in association with innovation in marketing till then goodbye.